Neil Armstrong has just reported back. It's been a real smooth countdown. We passed the 50-second mark. Power transfer is complete. We're on internal power with the launch vehicle at this time. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark. And today I'm going to be doing something a little different from what I usually do, restoring old watches and reviewing watchmaking tools. Today I'm going to do a quick review of a watch that has gotten a lot of attention lately, the Moon Swatch. 20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All lift engine off. running. Lift off. We have a lift off. 32 on, minutes right, past right. the hour. Lift off on Apollo Let's 11. Let's go, Alexa. Roger. Clear the tower. Roger the tower. We got a roll program. Now, this watch has intrigued me ever since it was introduced earlier this year. As most of you know, it's a collaboration between Swatch and Omega to reproduce the iconic Omega Speedmaster at a much reduced price. I actually wouldn't call it a reproduction, it's more like a tribute. I've always been fascinated by NASA, the space program, and arguably one of the greatest feats of human achievement, leaving the Earth and landing a human on another celestial body, the Moon. As a matter of fact, I still remember vividly playing with a scale replica of the Saturn V rocket in kindergarten. I'm sure that dates me a little bit, but it really had an influence on me as a child, and that fascination has never left me. But it wasn't until the, the mid-1990s that I learned about the Omega Speedmaster and how it was the watch that was certified by NASA for the space program and the first trip to the moon. I actually had a friend who owned a vintage Speedmaster and I helped him sell it on eBay many, many years ago. I always thought it would be cool to own one, but never felt that I could spend that much money on a watch, so it just remained a dream. 40 feet down, two and a half, picking up some dust. 30 feet, two and a half down, great shadow. Four forward. Forward, drift under the right, little. Right, three, down and a half. 30 seconds. Forward, just perfect. Good. Right. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. APA at a decent. Auto decent. Auto. Both control, both auto decent. Engine command override off. Engine arm off. 413 is in. Engine arm is off. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. I also felt that it was too big for my wrist. Now, I never actually tried it on. I just remember that the bracelet was really big. Admittedly, my friend had huge wrists, so it was nowhere near sized for me, but I just always had the impression of it being this huge watch. So anyway, fast forward to this year and the introduction of the Moon Swatch. I decided that this would be a good way to both quench my desire to own a Speedmaster, sort of, while at the same time see if it's a watch I could actually wear and enjoy. Unfortunately, all the hype and the lines and now the announcement that the watch wouldn't be sold online made it seem like I wouldn't be able to buy one. But a few weeks ago, I took a trip to Houston, Texas with my family to visit the Johnson Space Center. Now, this is a trip that we'd been planning to take for a few years now, but we just didn't get to. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Hey, Neil, we can see you coming. Okay, I just checked... Uh, Getting back up to that first step, uh, it's uh, that isn't collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy. It's a pretty good little jump. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder, 
the limb foot beds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Since we would be traveling through Dallas, I also thought that I would be able to stop at the Swatch store there to see if I could get lucky. Well, I struck out in Dallas, and they were also sold out at the Houston Swatch store when I went there the morning of our trip to NASA. But I thought I'd try one last time in the afternoon after leaving the Space Center, and lo and behold, I scored the mission to the moon. I was shocked, to say the least. But I actually got one, and I must say, I really like it. I mean, it does feel like just a plastic watch, and by no means the quality that I would expect from Omega. But if you lower your expectations a little bit, it's actually quite a nice watch. Now, it is a quartz movement, which I've never been a big fan of, but I can live with that in order to get the look of the Speedmaster. It has both the Omega and Speedmaster logos, which is great. Both the pushers operate just like the original. The hands line up with the markers pretty well for a quartz watch. And I just love how the chrono hand resets back to 12 in that smooth sweeping motion. Something that the genuine Speedmaster just doesn't do. I had heard complaints about the strap being stiff and uncomfortable, but to me, neither of those is true. I actually like how it feels on my wrist. It is light and barely noticeable. As for the size, the dimensions are the same as the Omega, and I actually think it fits me pretty well. But I'll leave the final verdict up to you on that. Be sure to leave me a comment below and tell me what you think of the fit. Is it too big? I look forward to hearing what you think. Also, tell me what you think about Swatch's decision to replicate the Speedmaster in this cheaper version. Were you able to find one? How long did it take you? Where did you find it? How were you treated by the employees? Leave your experiences in the comments below also. Now, I've only had this watch for a few weeks, but I actually think that I may look into getting a genuine Speedmaster Moon watch. I'm not sure if it's the trip to Johnson Space Center that may have rekindled my interest in the space program, or my newfound interest in watches and watchmaking and my appreciation for the fine movement, or my experiences with this Moon Swatch. Or maybe even the fact that I'm at a point in my life where I can actually afford to buy one. Or maybe it's just a combination of all these factors. But I do see an Omega Speedmaster Professional in my future. Well, thanks again for letting me share my experience with this interesting watch with you. I really appreciate you watching. Please check out my other videos as I continue my journey into watchmaking. If you like this video, please consider subscribing as it really does mean a lot to me, knowing that what I'm doing here is of interest to others. Check back in a couple weeks as I'm putting the finishing touches on another video 
I'm just waiting for some parts to come in for that one. Thanks again for watching, and until we meet back here again next time, please stay safe and God bless. Bring up the flag now. Great. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. That's all right, I don't mind a bit. How is the quality of the TV? Oh, it's beautiful, Mike, it really is. Oh, geez, that's great. Is the lighting halfway decent? Yes, indeed. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the limit. Beautiful, just beautiful.